Hello everyone, welcome to final exam review for standard 2.1. Uh, our goals for today, obviously, to get ready for the final exam 2.1 will be one of the standards that we see on the final exam next week. Uh, so this is where we examined whether or not we had equivalent expressions and we also uh, practice rewriting expressions using different techniques. Okay, so we're going to review what it means for expressions to be equivalent and then we're going to review uh, multiplying and factoring, which were the two main techniques that we had for writing equivalent expressions. All right, so here we go. Uh, we are going to be given a problem such as this on my open math where they give us two functions f of x and g of x here and our goal is to figure out whether or not these are the same right so you might look at them and say this looks like the factored version of f of x right so g of x looks like it might be the factored version of f of x i don't really know it's hard to tell uh, so we're gonna we're gonna maybe make a guess we can say yes or no but really we need evidence to back up our claim all right, so the best, well, not the best way, but the first way that we can tell whether or not these two functions are equivalent is by looking at the table, okay? So I'm gonna pull up my calculator here, I'm, and I'm gonna demonstrate this on the TI-84. TI-84 has a much better table feature, I think, than, than most of your other tools. Uh, so I'm gonna go to my Y equals button. I'm gonna clear out anything in the Y1 and Y2 field, and I'm gonna put F of X in Y1, and I'm gonna put G of X in Y2. So let's do that. Then we'll go to y2, we got parentheses x plus 1, and then x plus 3. Okay. And I'm going to go right to my table, so I'm going to hit the blue button second, and then I'm going to hit graph. And that takes me to my table. Okay. And if I notice that they're going to set up the tables for you here on my open math, so notice that they are set up to go from 0 to 5, so they want you to put the outputs uh, for 0 to 5 for both functions. So I'm going to scroll down. Uh, so that I can see 0 through 5 in my table here. All right, so here's 0, and then I'm looking at my inputs and outputs, and I can tell right now that they are not going to be the same. But I'm going to come over here, I'm going to write down these values, because if I were in my open math, they're going to want me to, to write out these values in my table. Okay, so pull that over. And I can get these side by side, and we can see those a lot easier. Okay, so remember y1, the y1 side of the table here, that represents f of x, so I get the blue values for this one, so 0, 3, and then 1, 0, 2, negative 1, and then 3, 0, 4, 3, and then we've got uh, 5 and 8. Okay, so this is f of x. And then I'm gonna do g of x. Remember, g of x is gonna be located in the y2 column here in red. So I'm gonna go 0, 3. All right, and then I'm gonna go 1, and then I go over to the red column, so it'll be 1 and 8. And then we've got 2 and 15, 3 and 24, and then 4 and 35, and 5 and 48. Okay, so that's how I would complete my tables. Now, obviously looking at these tables, we can see they're not gonna be the same function. Otherwise, the inputs and the outputs would be exactly the same for both functions. So when they ask you, what do you notice about the tables? Does it suggest that they are equivalent expressions? Talk about how you know uh, whether or not these demonstrate equivalence or not, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, look at the graphs of these two, right? So if I'm on my calculator and I hit the graph button, if they were the same function, we would see one parabola lay right on top of the other parabola. We wouldn't be able to tell the difference, right? If I'm able to see two different parabolas on my graph, then we know they're not the same, right? So there is f of x, and let's see if we get a different parabola for g of x. And we do, right? We can see two distinct parabolas here the red and the blue, they are clearly different, so we know that they are not the same. Now when you get to my open math and you do this, what they're gonna have you do is take these points in your table, you're gonna plot them on the graph here, and you're gonna take these points from g of x and you'll plot them on the g of x graph. And then they're gonna ask you what that suggests, right? What, what do you notice? What does it suggest about whether or not the expressions are the same okay so type into the field tell me everything that the graphs that, that you think the graphs tell you about equivalence there all right so I'm not going to graph those points I think you guys can plot points uh, but just so you know how it works on my open math all right 
So the last piece of evidence that we want to get when we tell whether or not two expressions are equivalent is the algebraic uh, manipulation of one into another, right? So is there a way to take g of x and use one of our algebraic techniques to rewrite this thing as f of x? Or maybe we could rewrite f of x as g of x. All right now on my open math I'm gonna have you guys go the multiplication route which means you're gonna take g of x and you're gonna set up a 2 by 2 box okay we're gonna multiply out x plus 1 and x plus 3 and see what we get all right so this will be set up for you on my open math this box that I'm drawing here now and they're gonna have the x plus 1 across the top and the x plus 3 along the side and then all you have to do is go through and multiply right so you're using the multiplication um, operation to help you figure out whether or not g of x is the same as f of x so let's see all right so we got x times x well that's x squared x times 1 is 1x and 3 times x is 3x and then 3 times 1 is 3 right and then to figure this out all we have to do is add these four boxes together so we get x squared plus 1x and 3x, those are going to combine to give me 4x, and then we have a plus 3. All right, so this is the result right here of multiplying out. So I'm going to take this and compare it to f of x over here and just try and figure out are they the same? And you should be able to tell right away they are not the same, right? The big difference here being we have a minus 4x in f of x and a plus 4x over here in g of x. All right, so that's the big difference. All right, so on my open math, they're gonna set you up for multiplication. It is also possible to factor this, right? You could try and factor this and see if you get to the same thing that you get over here for g of x. So that's another option, but my open math is set up for the multiplication, all right? Okay, so let's move on. Uh, so again, we wanna make sure that you do know how to multiply expressions together. Uh, so you might get a problem like this where I'm gonna ask you to multiply these two expressions, right? One in each parentheses. So we're gonna use our generic rectangles to help us out with that, right? So this is one of our expressions. This is another one of our expressions. And you'll notice in this first expression that we have two factors, right? Uh, I'm sorry, two terms. Terms are things in between the plus and the minus signs, right? So we have a plus sign here, and then we have a negative 3x and a 2. So there's two things in this expression, or two terms. Now over here we have three terms, right? One, two, three, right, in between the plus and minus signs. Okay, so when we set up our rectangle to help us with multiplication, we need a 2 by 3 rectangle. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. And instead of a two by two, because I know we're used to the two by twos, I'm drawing a two by three. So I'm gonna split it two ways going this way, and then three ways going this way. And then I'm gonna take this first expression, negative three x plus two, and I'm gonna put it along the side, just like that, right? So there's my negative three x, there's my positive two. And then I'm gonna take this second expression and I'm gonna write it across the top. All right, so the negative four x squared, will go here, the positive 4x will go here, and the negative 1 will go here above this column. And then we go through and we multiply, just like we did up here. Okay, so I'm going to do negative 3 times negative 4, well that's a positive 12, and then x times x squared is x to the third. And then we do the same thing here, we got negative 3x times 4x, well negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, and x times x is x squared. Negative 3x times negative 1, so that's going to be a positive 3x. And then we go down here, we got negative 4x squared times 2, so 2 times negative 4, that's negative 8, and then we have an x squared. And we do the same thing here, 2 times 4x is 8x, and then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Okay, so we have multiplied everything, now we've got to add up our six boxes here. So I'm going to write this out, I've got 12x to the third minus 12 x squared minus 8x squared plus 3x plus 8x minus 2. All right, so I got all six of my boxes here with the appropriate signs attached to them. And then the last thing I want to do here is combine like terms. All right, so remember like terms are anything that have the same variable raised to the same power. Okay, so these two guys right here, they both have an x squared. And then these two guys right here, they both have an x. So I can combine this and this for a more simplified expression. 
Okay, so the 12x to the third is going to remain unchanged. When I combine a negative 12x squared and a negative 8x squared, we get minus 20x squared. And then when I combine a 3x and an 8x, I get a positive 11x. And then we have minus 2. So this becomes my final expression. So we took something that looked like this and we rewrote it into something that looks like this. Okay. So that is multiplication. All right. Last problem I'm going to show you here is factoring. Okay. So this is something that we've been doing all semester. It's not going to go away. We're going to do it next semester too. So if you haven't learned it, now is as good a time as any. All right, so I'm going to set up my box here. So remember, we use a box and diamond method to help us with our factoring. So I'm going to set up a box. It's going to be a two by two box. And we start off factoring by taking the x squared term and putting it in the upper left hand corner. We take the negative five, right, the constant on the end, it goes in the bottom right. And then we take this middle term, this negative nine x, and I put it in the bottom of my diamond, All right? Because the other two boxes over here, they have to add up to give us negative nine x, all right? And that's what we're trying to figure out is what to put in this other diagonal, All right? So the diamond's gonna help us figure that out. Now the top of our diamond is determined by multiplying this diagonal right here. So I'm gonna take negative five times two x squared and we get negative 10 x squared, All right? So what we're looking for, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us a negative 10, but add to give us a negative nine, All right? So one way I can do that is by taking negative 10 and positive one. All right, so we get negative 10x and 1x, and this is where most students tend to struggle most, is just finding these two numbers. We need two numbers that multiply to give us negative 10x squared and add to give us a negative 9x. Well, if I do negative 10 times one, I get my negative 10. If I do negative 10 plus one, I get my negative nine. Okay, so I got negative 10x and 1x. That fills in my other diagonal. All right, so now we start trying to figure out these outside dimensions, right? So to get a 2x squared, we're gonna need a 2x and an x. So I'm gonna put my 2x over here. I'm gonna put my x up here, right? 2x times x is 2x squared. And you might be wondering, well, could we have put the 2x up here? The answer to that question is no. And the reason being is because we need a number over here that goes nicely into two and negative 10. Two goes into both two and negative 10. Right, so if I were to divide these numbers by two, we'd get nice even integer numbers. However, two does not go into one. That's why we can't put that up here. All right, so now we think, well, two X times something that would go here has to give us a negative 10. Well, that's gotta be a negative five, right? Two times negative five is negative 10. So that's how I knew to put a negative five there. And then down here, we've got X times one, All right? X times one is one X. And now we look at our outside dimensions here and we can see our factors, right? So across the top, we have X minus five and across the side here, we have two X plus one. And okay. so that is how we factor. All right, guys, I hope you found the video helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the Zoom chat. Good luck on your final exam. I hope you all do well.